In the modern day analysis of World War II, people are sometimes confused why the naval powers fixated on having an effective torpedo bomber for their naval aviation branch. Whether it be the fleet air arm and the swordfish, or the American Navy and its devastator. This question is further confounded when they look at records and see the Devastator slaughtered at Midway, the ineffectiveness of early air-launch torpedo models, or the Swordfish's later failure at the Channel Dash mid-war. But for the beginning of the war, the torpedo was the most effective anti-ship weapon an aircraft could carry, and the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service made that point abundantly clear with their premier torpedo bomber, the Nakajima B-5N Kate. Made to replace the Yokosuka B-4Y, the B-5N was drafted up in 1935 by Nakajima's team led by Katsuji Nakamura. First flown in January of 1937, it took the title of the most advanced naval aircraft from America's TBD Devastator, being it was faster, had more range, while still having similar payload capabilities. First flown in the Second Sino-Japanese War, it was quickly revealed that while it was capable, the design was frail, lacking protection for both its field tanks and pilot, making it much like many other Japanese aircraft of the time, a flying fuel air bomb. As the Navy was reluctant to add armor, feeling the weight would ruin its performance, they attempted to up-engine the aircraft using the same Sake Model 11 radial engine from the Zero to give it more speed. And although they succeeded marginally, the original lack of protection was still a problem that would remain unfixed for its entire service life. Its next notable operation would be the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, wherein it performed as both a high-level bomber and torpedo bomber, being the aircraft responsible for the ammo detonation of USS Arizona, as well as the other casualties of Battleship Row, West Virginia, California, Oklahoma, and Utah. While Arizona was sunk with an armored-piercing bomb, blessed by Lady Luck herself, California, West Virginia, and Oklahoma would fall victim to torpedo runs, as unlike the American Devastator and its unreliable Mark 13, the Japanese Type 91 aerial torpedo was an effective and reliable weapon. Following Pearl Harbor, the B-5N would find use in many of the major battles of the Pacific, including Coral Sea, where they sunk the carrier USS Lexington, and again in Santa Cruz, where they sunk Hornet. In Midway, they would manage to cripple Yorktown, but not before the Keto Batai's main carrier core was shattered by dauntless dive bombers from Enterprise, Yorktown, and Hornet. Now, while the B-5N was successful, part of that success was due to the other half of the Japanese Naval Air Service's dynamic duo, the Aichi D-3A Val Dive Bomber. In order to allow the Kates to perform a successful torpedo attack, the Vals would go in first and tie up both the Combat Air Patrol and AAA batteries of U.S. forces, often being escorted by Zeros, which allowed the Kates a clear shot to deliver their torpedoes, unimpeded by AAA or enemy fighters. With the destruction of the Kita Batai's main carrier force, however, and its subsequent loss of trained pilots, the effectiveness of torpedo runs performed by Kates would take a sharp turn downward only made worse as the Allied forces began to introduce new AAA systems on their ships, complete with new fire directors, as well as new fighters to outfit carriers, including Hellcats and Corsairs now taking the place of the old Wildcats. Speaking of technological progression, the Cape by mid-war was out of date, being in need of replacement since, honestly, Pearl Harbor. But Japan was slow to begin searching for a replacement, and so the Cape would fly for the rest of the war, wherein it was slaughtered and later relegated to second-line duties, such as a trainer and anti-submarine warfare, as well as kamikaze duties when that time arrived. The B-6N Jill would be the aircraft that tried to succeed the Kate, and would enter into service in 1943 after many delays. Though it wouldn't achieve much, if any, success, being thrown into the waves of Hellcats the U.S. Navy carriers now had, where they fared little better than the Cades, being now without a dedicated organized fighter and bomber corps to support them like in the early war. Japan had lost so many pilots, ships, and territory that it grew desperate to halt the advancing allies at any cost, so now it was just beginning to throw things at the wall and see what stick. Cates would be last used in the front lines as bombers in the unsuccessful defense of the Philippines in 1944, and retired in 1945 with Japan's surrender. A total of just over a thousand aircraft would be made, and none would survive to today outside of two incomplete airframes. Though interestingly, a bunch of T-6 Texans would be converted to look like B-5N Cates for the movie Tora Tora Tora, and would be used in other films to depict the B-5N as well. They can be recognized by their somewhat swept back wings, a feature the Kates do not have as their wings are more straight.